What's happening? This is Slink Johnson sitting in for my man X to the Z. And I'm Soren Baker here, Open Bar Radio, 93.5 K-Day. Yes, sir. Slink, it, man. What's going on with you tonight, Slink? Oh, man, I'm feeling fabulous tonight, man. You know, I'm almost as high as I want to be. You know almost. what I'm saying? I'm, yeah, almost, man. I need a couple of more <laughs> bottles, of, you know, a couple of more pieces of med to get me right. You know what I'm saying? My carnivorosity's bubbling, and it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful, magnificent show tonight, because guess what else we got? Oh, we got some cocaine in the house. Man, look here Oh, now. wait, am I supposed to say that? Say, man, I mean, it, it is what it is, man. It is man. what it is, man. But He's we here. ain't talking about the white girl, though. Nah, not the white girl. Nah, we ain't talking about that, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> we talking about cocaine, man. Jerry Long, a.k.a. Who Am I? He's man, in the man. house, man. Yes, sir. What Legendary. Do, man? Much love. Slink, so open bar exhibit. That's what it is. Yeah, man. This man right here has been uh, involved in so much... Uh, amazing music, man. And uh, one of the things that we got to talk about is uh, Above the Law, getting right. in the game. So explain right. uh, your relationship with Hutch and uh, how he kind of brought you in the game. Well, Hutch is, uh, that's my cousin. Right. And, uh, you know, back when Above the Law was getting put on, you know, I did a three-song demo. And uh, Layla heard it, hooked it up, sent it to Easy, and next week I was signed. Right. So that kind of like started my career. And what songs what were on the demo? Um... Some songs off the Who Am I? Mm -hmm. Because there was, you know, Epic Records was afraid. You know, I don't mean to call out names. Right. But Epic Records was afraid to call me Who Am I? You know, we was we was never talking about, you know, advocating anyway. We was talking about dope. Now, years later, everybody talked about crack music. <laughs> but back then, people was like, no, no, we can't have that on the radio. So, Man, that's real talk. You know, so that kind of started it was kind of much harder to get up the hill because of the name Cocaine. Yeah, now this is an amazing night because Cocaine, for those that don't know, has been down with the Ruthless Records and, and just the whole movement of the West Coast since the beginning of basically really when it jumped off as a movement. Right. And, and one thing I want to take it back to is uh, you did some writing with NWA on their second album on Appetite for Destruction, which we played earlier. Right. So how did you adapt to uh, being an artist but also writing for others? Well, it was simple, you know. You know, I always used to write, you know, prior to hooking up with Eric. You know, my dad was a writer, so I come from a musical background. Because my dad's Jerry B. Lone singing, he wrote Just My Imagination. Papa was a Rolling Stone. So you kind of say music grew up in my household. And it just, you know, fit more in the OJ glove to write to Eric. Because it complemented where we came from. You know, Pomona, the hood. So it was real easy. It was, like, simple. Mm -hmm. And so. then what did you learn uh, being around that like nucleus of artists, man. You got Cube, you got Easy, you got Dre, MC Ren, Above the Law. Well, well, Eric was the mecca. You know, we are the branches to the root, and it's like, you know, he had a vision that you know because of him that you can go past stereotypes and different things. He was a special breed, but he never did compromise where he came from. He always kept a Compton hat in the back, Cornices, you know, five foot two but was taller than everybody in the game. Easy and was a G. Yeah, he was a real G. He wasn't no, like, it's a lot of people in the industry, and it's like, he cast the first stone without seeing, so I ain't here to badger nobody, but he was authentic, A1 Yola, at his game. So learning from that, you know, looking back 25 years later, it's just, you know, because of Easy is the reason why Cube and Dre and everything picked up off those elements how to handle your business plus. Yeah, man, and uh, Cocaine, you've also, in addition to the NWA members proper, you also work with the NWA family tree extensively, working with Snoop. Right. So how, how did you really connect and, and vibe with Snoop back in the day? Well, we met Snoop, because uh, Warren G, all of us was family. We all used to kick it at all the achievements. And uh, Warren G always used to say, man, I got this dude. He's the coldest freestyle ever. His name is Snoop, Snoop Slim. So he we brought him up to the studio. He brought him up to the studio in La Cienega and Centinella, which was above the law studio. And at that time, I was working on the Who Am I. Hutch was really interested in Snoop. And out of a lot of people I seen freestyle, Snoop was one of the coldest freestylers ever. Right. So during that time, you know, everything was happening at one time with the NWA fallout. This was all at the beginning of '91. So long story short. Um, I met him like the beginning of 91, him and Nate Dog when Warren G, my homeboy, took him up to the studio. 
And during that time, like I said, when stuff was falling out with the NWA and Dre unsatisfied, satis- not satisfied, the ruthless. Right. Um, at that time, I was working on my Funk Upon a Rhyme mm-hmm. to plant seeds for that. And respect to what Snoop wanted to do, you know, he couldn't wait around. So Warren G took Snoop Dogg up to Dr. Dre. Right, right. We were all having problems at that time. I'm going to keep it 100. We were all having problems with the company because of certain discrepancies. But see, we rekindled our business relationship with Dr. Dre was set on going on what he wanted to do. Mm-hmm. You know, just like Q, you know, all respecting them. They made smart moves, of course. I mean, you wearing his headphones. Yeah, I mean, and, so, and, and Snoop made a, a big, big move by putting you a lot on right, the last meal, man. Right. What it was, what it was after Easy died, that was our lifeline. Right. And, you know what I'm saying? I was kind of left, left in the cold, 40 below. So nine times out of 10, I go to the studio and, you know, dudes like what I do. Say, you crazy. I like that. You sound like George Clinton put me on. So back in 1999, when uh, back when Echo Sound was around, Snoop was like, man, I'm about to put my stuff. So six months later, you know, we was working. I was working in Upland and Half Dead uh, brought me up to the studio. Well, actually, Snoop Dogg House at the beginning of 99 and said, man, let's make it official. We was friends before. All that old death row and ruthless, that was at another time. So we just put the funk away. And the first song that we did was produced by my boy Meech, Meech Wells. And that was, he said, I want to put the group together called the East Siders, And I want your sound to, to, to let's mix and mingle with my sound. And we do the doghouse thing. So the first song we did was in Hollywood at the Music Grinder. And that was dum, 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 dum. Oh, ho, oh, dum, dum. That was for the East Siders. And we just kept going and it felt right. And it's like, you know, I was over there in Claremont just doing a lot of songs because he was feeling me, I was feeling him. And it's like, man, we wanted, he wanted to come up with the last meal because this is the last time he was going to really step off on his own right. like he'd been doing and really make a statement. But I didn't even know, you know, I didn't even know he was going to use all them songs to tell you the trill. So after hooking up with that last meal, it really catapulted my name because the mystique was built up. Hey, what's up, X? My man Exhibit out there in somewhere in Bulgaria or somewhere doing some, some straight player shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's, he probably, uh, he's on that Loose Cannons tour with Bishop Lamont. What up, X? He probably hunting some 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 uh, um, some Hungarian uh, wolfhounds or something. I don't know. You know, they do real fly safari type shit. Yeah, and speaking of Exhibit, man, Cocaine, you did a, a classic song with Exhibit, Rins and Tires, man. So let's wow. get into this. With this song, uh, I thought it was uh, phenomenal on many levels, but I wanted to get from you. What did you? What was the vibe that you caught when you were working and writing on that one? Oh, man, it's automatic, man. You know, I ain't got to iron out the wrinkles and, and, and Exhibit balls to let you know he's one of the top ones. You right. know what I'm saying? Yes. So it was like automatic, man. Exhibit, me and him always had good conversation prior to doing those type of songs. and It just felt right. You know, we just wanted to talk about the shiny rims with the three gold wings with the egos, where we come from, rims and tires. It just came out like that. You know what I'm saying? And then also that was on the Restless album that was, uh, you know, coming off of a, you know, his success working with Dre and getting right. down with the Snoop and, and the crew and everything. So what difference did you see maybe during during this time for Exhibit with what he was doing? Progress. Mm-hmm. He took advantage of it. Some know how to take advantage of it and some sit around and complain. He took advantage of it. You know, you got to take all your hats off to him. You know what I'm saying? Because he stepped his game all the way up from the acting field and different other things. And he's to be celebrated. Right. You know what I'm saying? And he always come back home. And, you know, I just appreciate a cat like that, you know. We got one of your old friends here, Slink. Oh, man. And this is of tremendous proportion tonight. I've been knowing this guy for a long time, man. Way before he had the menacing beard. Like yeah. I said, man, mm-hmm. the dude, hey, he was once a child. You trying this to say is, he looks like a criminal, Slink? Hey, man, I didn't say you that, trying to man. Say that? Leave it to the white man to say hey, that. Man. But it's cool. <laughs> it's cool. I didn't say that, Soren. I know you, you didn't said, mean it. You said menacing. I what said menacing. I, well, you know, it, it, it looks menacing. It looks menacing to men of non beardal proportions. Well, watch out now. <laughs> but it's my man, Short Chop, Mr. Chopadopolis. What's happening, pimp? Oh, man, what's good with it, man? Oh, man, I'm here, man. We got you in the house, man. We up here with my man, Cocaine. What's up? What you got going on, Chop? Oh, man, you know, we just did the uh, the plastic surgery video today, and we just shot through and just came to, you know what I mean? 
Uh, talk about everything was going now, on. Now, plastic surgery, man. Let's get into this, Chop. This uh, this a song coming from Cocaine's album? This Coca album. This Coca album. Uh, Mr. G Funk himself. So, you know, he called me and told me, like, let's get it, Chop. I got one for you. And I'm like, let's go. Yeah, man. man. So, Cocaine, what's so the name of your there. album? It's called King of G Funk. And when's it dropping? It's dropping next year. Okay. Right now, I'm just out here campaigning and taking my time. It's 2016. Killer, it's killer, too. So, oh, watch man. Watch it. Man, it's a beautiful thing, and I think it's so important here because we are on K-Day, the first station that was, you know, 24-7 rap, and uh, we're talking about a lot of history right now, and, and one of the things I think, Cocaine, that you could speak on that's very important is the legacy and the significance of Above the Law, especially kicking off with the Vocally Pimpin' EP and the Black Mafia Life album that really changed the sound of the West Coast and then music in general. Right. So what, what did uh, Hutch... Uh, AKA Co187. Well, so what you, do they do? What you got to realize do? above the law, you know, they were the first ones to say chronic on record. Mm -hmm. They was the first ones to invent the word G Funk. You know what I'm saying? And all these, we, we dealt around the same element. So it complemented each other when Hutch hooked up with Dr. Dre, which at that time, Dr. Dre was the sensei. You can't take nothing away from Dr. Dre, real talk. Right. You can't not take nothing away from Hutch. So when they was doing this thing, Dre, when we would come in the studio, Dre was incorporating the bass thing, but he was always that M MP3 driven, I'm like bam. Right. And see, Hutch brought Dr. Dre a little different essence to the game. Mm. I mean, he even brought him the break record to 100 Miles and Running. So how Above the Law played a whole thing into it is just like we call Easy e the Godfather Gangster Rap. But really, it was because of the Ice T record six in the morning. Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing. You, you got G Funk Air and all these people, and even including myself. But the above the law drew the blueprint. And speaking of mind. yourself, you got that new album about to drop next year. So what's right. the title of it for those? It's called It's called King of G Funk. Now you know that's a big statement to <laughs> say that. You know what I'm saying? But rest in peace to my homie KMG. Mm -hmm. My homie KMG said, "Cause I don't care about entitlement. I mean." For those that want entitlement, here's a Fifi bag. But <laughs> all due respect to my homeboy, you know, we was going through my features, and he said, man, you got thousands and thousands of features. You truly are from that era, the king of G-Funk. Mm -hmm. So out of respect, I threw on the shirt, and it stuck with me. And as far as business-wise, so <clears throat> it's just more deeper than entitlement. Here's somebody who's been on thousands of features more than anybody in the game, and it's the same thing. Michael Jordan's the best player in the world, but he didn't. Basketball came in 18-something. So it's saying out of all this, it don't have nothing to do with entitlement. It's just this is the king of that particular sound. Right. And, and uh, man, it's just amazing because, you know, when you really look back at, at the big movements that are the West Coast, cocaine has been integral in both of them, in all of them, I should say. And uh, Chop has been around making moves, having too, with, like, with like, the Don like, Mega, like, like, among like, many like, others. Like, that's right, that's right. And uh, Chop, one thing I wanted to get from you too, man, is like a lot of people talk about this song, but not enough, which is the Ghetto Vet that you worked on with Ice Cube, uh, yeah. which I Cold. thought was a phenomenal song because it had a, it was a very strong anti-gang banging and reality look at what goes on in the streets. So what was going on when you guys were working on that song? Oh man, we was just in there, and he, he came. He, he hit me like chop. Uh, I got this song. I need you to listen to him. And I'm like, okay. So he he played the song, and I'm like, oh, okay. And he like, uh, chop, gonna put a hook on there. I'm like, all right. So I came up with the little hook or whatever, and you know what I'm saying when the lady, man, it, it, it was what it was. He had Mac do a part, and it, man, it was just beautiful after that, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, man, it's uh, just... a very poignant message. Absolutely, yeah. man. So, uh, yeah, as we're wrapping up here, Short Chop Cocaine, how does everybody find you guys on social media? Oh, man, at Dopolis. What's that, the Instagram? The, the Mr. At Mr. Short Chop on the, uh, the little Twitter thing. You know what I mean? That's that. Cocaine, what about you, man? You can reach me on Twitter, K-O-K-A-N-E. Don't spell it cocaine. Spell it K-O-K-A-N-E <laughs> official. Not the same thing. Not the same thing. You can reach me on Insta Greasy at uh, Jerry B. Long. My and I know Slink for you, if they want to see you, they should watch Black they Jesus. They should watch Black Jesus Friday nights at 11 p.m. As a matter of fact, watch it tonight. And find me on all your social networkings at Slink Johnson. And we're Open Bar Radio at Open Bar Radio on Twitter and 
Instagram and on Open Bar Radio on Facebook. It's Dopolis. Oh Slink, man. man, appreciate yeah. you coming through again, man. I appreciate you having me, man. I'm gonna stick around a little bit, man, because I want to hear what my man DJ Showtime talking about. Because he didn't come in here with what I asked him for, but that's all right. I'm gonna sit right here and stare at his ugly ass all night until he, you know, produce what the. F- yeah, yeah. I'm, you know what I'm talking about. Open Bar Radio, ninety three five K day. Open Bar Radio.